The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. I'm CJ. And I'm Carlos. And boy, oh boy, has it come down and it's starting to rain feces. <laughs> the cesspool's getting full, people. It's getting full. Let's, uh, let's attack this right, right at the outset. According to reports, as we spoke about, I believe, on Wednesday's show, the mayor has said that if he doesn't get his ordinance... He is going to terminate Ken Pacheco. That is extortion. Like it or not, that's extortion. Now, according to Sean Kadeem yesterday, he doesn't have enough information to approve this ordinance. And according to many members of the city council, they don't have enough information to approve this ordinance. They want some questions answered. And I think the big question people want is, where's the savings? Where's the savings? Do we have savings? And it's very interesting to see how now privatization of trash doesn't have to go out for an RFP. He thinks he can do this unilaterally. Do we remember a mayor that said, it's up to me and I make that decision, so I'm going to do this? Yeah, well, you know, this, there, therein lies the rub, as, as Shakespeare once said. You know, we, we, have, these, we have these people that, that make these statements. And, and, you know, the fact is that you know, Sean Kadeem can say they don't have enough information. The catch-22 with that statement is when they do get enough information. They don't do anything. If they, yeah, and if, besides not, they'll either approve it even though they shouldn't. But if they look at the information, as we, as we talked about in la in, in, on uh, our last show, you're paying two people to do the job that one person used to do. You, got, you give one guy a $15,000 pay cut, and you give somebody a $98,000 job. So the last time I did a little quick math in my head, that's an $83,000 more expensive to get those departments run. And I, I really never heard anything except Ken, Ken Pacheco was doing well with those departments. And as we said, you know, when you, when you downsize you normally do more with less. You don't s create new departments right. and create new high-paying jobs. So if they get the information and, and, and they do what is, is best for the taxpayers of the city of Fall River, that means that now we have an ultimatum. But the you mayor know, has said he's going to terminate Ken Pacheco, one of the most respected department heads in the city. For what? For, for, because, it, as you said, it's intimidation, it's coercion, uh, it's a threat, and now it's going to be a hill that he's either going to uh, die on, and, and this is the way the city's being run. Uh, if I don't get my way, somebody's head will roll, and somebody that you like, or uh, this is, you know, this is just, it's just on so many levels ridiculous you know but chip the, the biggest <laughs> problem i'm having here kathy ann vivera said that they have to create two departments because now you're going to love this mentality here because this is the mentality of the administration we have to create two departments because building and grounds which already exists by the way hasn't done anything for a number of years but by putting ken pacheco in that position he is going to do the job that he's best at doing because he's a tradesman and we will improve these buildings in the city well the big question that I and many of our viewers have is if this is already a department in the city why haven't they done anything over the decades let's give <laughs> Kathy Ann a hand here you go Kathy <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for, for reaffirming my nausea every time I look at government. Because here we go again. Your solution is, we've been paying somebody to maintain the buildings and grounds for years. We've had a building and maintenance guy in the school department for years. So we're going to create a new position, give somebody else that responsibility, but still keep him on the job. 
Heaven forbid that somebody in the city actually held the individual in the school department. There have been numerous ones going all the way back to Mr. Shaker and, and uh, there, were a, there were a whole bunch of people. I met, actually, somebody called me up and reminded me of the last guy. Um, but we've had people in those positions making a very good salary, by the way, for years. But that's government. You don't do your job, they keep paying you, and they hire somebody else to do your job. You, they, I mean, this, this is, this is so, you know, it, look, it's absolutely ludicrous. Heaven forbid that we held that person accountable and maybe fired that guy and hired somebody who would do the job. Why do we need to know? Let's, let's have, well, the hell with it. And if Kenny doesn't do his job, let's hire somebody else. But, you know, Chip, the thing is this, which may, even a few city councilors made very aware. You can put somebody in this department head if there's no money there to do the job, <laughs> except for the salaries <laughs> of the department head and the guy who's going around picking up cigarette butts. You, you can't do any repairs. Now, my, big, my biggest thing here is, and this is a hypothesis now, so people don't think that this uh -oh. is a fact yet. Hypothesis, that's yeah. got way, way too many syllables in that <laughs> word. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe that the mayor it has a friend or a political supporter who is going to get the job in DCM if he gets his um, ordinance to create the two departments. And that person has already been chosen. And that is why he has to have two departments. He doesn't want to get rid of Ken Pacheco because he's very popular with the public and with the elected. But he made it very clear, and he said this to the Herald News. Is Ken Pacheco's position terminated if he doesn't get this ordinance? Yes, he is. Why? Because he has a political favor or a political friend or a friend in general, because it could be his high school buddy. You know, a lot of high school buddies are getting jobs lately um, that needs this job. And so he's going to get this job one way or the other. Now, a, a professor here at uh, the college, and I had a conversation a few weeks back, and he said something. He says, you're looking at people who have never had a job that are getting high paying jobs in city government because the mayor who's never had a true job okay and we can't find one anywhere has now got a job a true job that he's making some money at and all his friends who have never had true jobs are getting these same jobs this is not an employment agency and when we look at this you know I'll probably get you know attacked outside the studios later but when you look at this, this is what's happening in Fall River. This time, though, unlike Will Flanagan, unlike Ed Lambert, you know, even unlike Carlton Viveris or Bob Correa, this guy's just putting it out there. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. And he's just shoving it in everyone's face. Yeah. And that is what's wrong. Well, what else is wrong is, just for, the, just for the sake of clarity, and I want to make this clear, you can look it up. Um, the reality of this whole ridiculous situation is that the that the care and maintenance of all public buildings in the city of Fall River has been under the Department of Public Works or DCM or whatever you want to call it for decades. It's in the city ordinances. Kenny Pacheco was in charge of the buildings in the city by ordinance all the time that he's been at the department head as were every single department head who preceded him. The maintenance of the buildings in Fall River is, is by ordinance the jurisdiction of DCM. So we're, now we've created another job that actually has already existed and given it to the guy who already had it. And, and we're, we're giving pay, a pay cut. And we're paying him and we're paying a guy in the, in the, in the school department to do a job that was already there. So now we get to do it three different times because he already had that job. But what we've done is we've taken that job away from the, the bigger picture and rather than, than consolidate services and have downsizing, we have oversizing. We've got the, the home of the WAPA. And all the while, while our mayor is kicking some of the lowest paid people out into the street because he's gonna privatize and talking about privatizing uh, our sanitation. 
because of it. it's not, you know, it, we shouldn't be talking about it. Well, yeah, we should be talking about it because there are people who are now going to lose their jobs. Some of them will work for the city for a very long time, but they're going to get first opportunity to work for this, this company uh, that probably uh, contributed to his campaign fund. You know, this, this is everything that's wrong with the city of Fall River and why we never move forward. And it's like, and, then we, and we have a council that sits there. And although I have to say, this council is, is, is making some very good points. They're looking at numbers, they're looking at, they're looking at things. Then they give these really good presentations and ask questions and, and expose inaccurate figures. And then they vote for it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't get it, but you just gave me a great argument why we should not do this. And then you do it. I don't know, maybe Linda's gotten to everybody at one of those meetings over, over coffee and said, remember, there always comes a time where you've got to do what you shouldn't do because it's politics. And that maybe that's the only reason. But I just don't understand how you can do this while you're killing the, you know, the, our tax base continues to erode. People who own income property are getting killed. And then ultimately, you're going to have to charge so much rent, they're going to lose the few tenants that they have or the people aren't going to pay. And, and, you know, people are losing their houses. And all the while, we've got, uh, we've got the mayor and his merry band of, of, of look, I got my first job. Uh, everybody's having a picnic in this city, I, you know, except the people who pay all the freight. And as I said, and all the, seat, all the guys on the board of directors at Charlton are walking into their board meeting maybe once every couple of months and making their three or $400,000, going out to the suburbs where they live and saying, oh, we don't pay anything, we're a nonprofit. And nobody talks about letting them pay their fair share. There's no fairness in the city of Fall River. There's no fairness. And we're going to get to another issue about Kmart. There's one of the classic examples. A business has been in this city about 40 years, and they boot, they kick them to the curb. Now, Kenny Fiola, quote, I'm not sure what they will do, Fiola said, as, in, as, as of the end of July, their lease is over and they'll have to move. Kenny, it's your job to not only get people and businesses in this city, but to keep them. You don't know? Why didn't you know? When, when Market Basket came up and you knew this, this was an issue, you want them to go seek you, an employer in this city that's been employing people for 40 years, you're going you're, you're gonna to potentially let them move out of the city, which now subtracts another 125 employees from Market Basket's 325. Now we're down to 200. Then if they close the stop and shop, we lose another 300. So we got a net loss of about 100 jobs when Market Basket comes here. And by the way, Stop and Shop and Kmart both paid taxes. So let's, let's sit down and do the numbers. Let's see what Market Basket is going to cost the city of Fall River. Not what it's going to bring in, but let's do the real numbers. Let's project how many jobs we're going to lose in the two businesses that are going to leave because of Market Basket. It's actually more businesses, Chip, and that's that's. Well, the I thing. mean, these are the two major, right? And, and I mean, they're directly affected. I mean, Stop and Shop in the South End, they, you know, Shaw's closed. They're there, and they're running on it. They're running on a tight. You know, there's a lot of market. So now you bring in Market Basket, and you go, oh yeah, well we got to. Oh, and but this is the propaganda. They're talking about, oh, they're going to spend fifty million dollars. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. It won't be anybody working from and, the and city. And let's be real. And it's crap. Look, it's you know, I'm so fed up with this with this propaganda. I'm going to tell you something. It's good. It's a good thing. That, the, that these politicians in Fall River weren't around in WW2 because they would have they would have got Goebbels's job. They're better than he is. I mean, they can sell they can sell BS better than anybody I've ever seen in my life. This is absolutely ridiculous. But Chip, you know the the the, the thing is, I met either via phone or in person with several companies located in that area. Okay. Every business in the Harbor Mall Plaza, I'm not going to call it South Coast Plaza yet, in the Harbor Mall Plaza are up for removal. They're up for removal. So you're talking Staples, you're talking the bank, you're talking Burger King. 
Those are all land. All those properties are leased land. They put the buildings on it, they lease the land. So if they need to expand that in whatever manner they need to, those businesses are up for removal. Now I spoke with Staples. They actually had a corporate representative in the store. The store is, is bare in many areas. They don't hire a lot of people, but they're the only staples in this area. The nearest staples is 20 miles west or 20 miles east or 20 miles north. Taunton, Seekonk, and uh, Fairhaven. Okay, those are the three locations around us. That's it. That is it. So guess what? If we lose staples, thank you, Kenny Fiola, and the Office of Economic Deception, um, if we lose Stop and Shop, again, thank you, Kenny Fiola, and the Office of Economic Deception, at what point will the city finally say, why do we keep paying this guy a six-figure salary when for 20-plus years he hasn't done anything? This has been an absolute bunch of bull. And you're right. Let's look at the real numbers. Let's look at what's actually happening. How many tax dollars does Stop and Shop pay? How many tax dollars does Kmart pay? And how Staples many, and, and, and... And Staples and all the other businesses. And how many tax dollars won't, and remember, won't Market Basket or that entire mall project won't pay? Well, we already know that's $41 million. $41 million they're not going to pay over 15 years. Okay? So can we afford $41 million? But if we don't do it as... Uh, was said on the on the air by Pamela Liberté LeBeau, Fall River has to. Yeah, I, I, I think you guys are right in, in, in all, all the issues that you're talking about uh, today. And I went in front of the city council with an example of the restaurants. It's just so many people that can afford to go out and eat. And it's so many people that want to work in the restaurant business. So when you open a new, a new restaurant, it's great. The city got another restaurant. But guess what? People that go out to eat are the same. So if they open a new restaurant, they're not going to come to, to, to eat on my restaurant. Now they're going to try this new place. So this new restaurant is going to get my, my share of the pie. And I'm going to lose that share of the pie. And then guess what? My cook okay, is going to leave me because he could get a, a, a 50 cents increase on his salary an hour and on this new restaurant that God knows if it's going to last a year, okay? But now I'm going to lose a cook too. So it's the same thing that's going to happen with this market. It's for sure. I can guarantee you that Stop and Shop is going to be affected and Stop and Shop sooner or later is going to close the doors. It, 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 it's not uh, no other way around. Well, you know, you're 100 percent right, Carlos. I mean, see, the thing is, you, you know, you, you because of your neighborhood association and the fact that you're very involved and you're, a, you're you know, you you understand these businesses, you you deal with their problems every day. But these are the things that our economic geniuses can't figure out. Now we got Kenny saying, I'm not sure what they'll do, but when Kmart does close they'll all be running around in front of the building going oh oh we're going to try to place these workers oh we're going to try to find a place for them well why haven't you already done that why weren't you preemptive rather than reactive no we never do that and as you said when they open up restaurants and they open up these things they're going to open up all these retail stores and stuff look like as you said we do not live in newton Maybe in Newton, where they have 14,000 businesses as opposed to 4,000 in Fall River, people can afford to go out to eat two or three times. They'll go to their favorite restaurant, and they'll try a new restaurant. I mean, I don't know where these people live and what they're drinking, because they don't understand that people in Fall River, the people that have the lowest income in the state of Massachusetts, where almost one quarter of the population is living below the poverty level, that's the reason we don't have a lot of restaurants outside of pizza joints and hot dog stands. 
It's because people don't have a lot of discretionary money to spend here. As you said, when you open up one business, you hurt another one because we can't sustain the businesses that we have. Almost every restaurant in this city is operating on a shoestring. Mm -hmm. And it, they, you know, and even the markets, competition, you know, they go, oh, you know, the free market. Well, the free market isn't free. You need money. And in order to have an accurate free market, you can't live in a state that should be, this. Fall River should be a socialist city because every, most of the people here don't earn enough money to live. You need to be, you need to be on welfare because it, you know, these, these grandiose plans of retail stores and there's no, no thought of the future. What happens in a few years if they build that, that casino in Tiverton? You know what casinos do? They have restaurants inside the casino to keep you there when you're gambling. They have a, so now it's, <laughs> you can throw a rock from where the casino's gonna be to the mall. Mm -hmm. So if that mall isn't already going under after a few years, which almost everybody does in Fall River, you know, it wasn't, you know, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not fortune tellers when, when Jerry Remy's opened, we said that Jerry Remy wouldn't stick around and Jerry Remy's already sold that. And it's not doing that great and it'll never do that great. The fact is that this city, as I said, and they say we don't propose anything. Yeah, we do. What we need to do is we need to build the city back up block by block. But one of the biggest factors in that is helping businesses in a city that are already here mm -hmm. survive and you're not doing that for him to for him to to, to to say this i mean he should be fired on the spot i'm not sure what they will do why aren't you sure you're making almost 200 grand but all you care about is saying look how many jobs i brought in and as we said before, let's do the math. Another thing that let's I don't do understand, math. Chip, is how does TIFs work? I mean, TIFs, are, they're playing with our money, period. That's our money they're giving away. Because at the end of the day, the bills need to be paid, and we're going to pay it, and these people's going to be rent-free. That's okay? right. Okay, so that's the way I see it. I understand doing negotiations we cannot talk about because we're doing negotiations. But when the negotiations it's done, we, sh we should be able to ask questions how that TIF got approved and what the conditions that TIF got approved. You mean to tell me you've never watched the TIF board meeting? Okay, so, <laughs> yes. So, so he, here's the thing. They're gonna get all, all this money. If two, two years on the road, they close down, what's gonna happen? We get nothing. Okay? We so get look, stiff, and that can, not and, tip. And, 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 and you know something? <laughs> and that can happen. Look at, look at uh, uh, Sam's Club. Uh, beautiful. Uh, but was, Sam's Club was a big did not, thing. It was yeah. a big thing for Fall River to get, to get uh, the, the Sam's Club over there and all the investment and all the jobs that came around the last two years. And now we have an empty building that we don't know what's going to happen. So can we go to, back to the TIF and see what the agreement is there? There was no TIF. There was no TIF. There was no TIF on Walmart or on Sam's Club. The TIF was given to the company that used to own that property. Yeah, but I have a TIF that I have questions still. Yeah. Is the TIF for the 104 apartments on the Wall Street? Well, that, hey, that, <laughs> before that, you even go there, they were just named the, the business of the year by the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, because again, when you are politically connected, you know, and Rob Mellion was appointed as chairman of the Massachusetts uh, Commerce and Tourism Council, which is an advisory council to the governor. And, oh, this is going to be good for the South Coast because I can use that to bring businesses into Fall River and the South Coast area. And that's good for him because if yeah. I had the opportunity to shake uh, uh, the, the governor's hands, probably you will pick me for something too. Probably you will like, you will like my, uh, my broken English. No, I but, think he'll like uh, your tie. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's the thing. It, it's, it, it, that tiff, but that particular tiff, I still have the questions, where is the cars going to park? And nobody was able to answer them my question yet. 
the TIF was given away. If you drive by the new parking lots uh, uh, on, on the water department there, you will see the cars already filling up the, that parking lot because it's no parking on Jerry Remy's parking lot anymore. And, and now we're going to add another 200 cars for 104 apartments. Well, you know, you know uh, you're right. And, and the problem is that, look, like I said, th there's no, they talk, we don't say anything. All right, well, let's, let's be factual. Um, everything we bring in does more harm than good in about nine out of ten cases, as Market Basket will. The fact is that we never do anything with any kind of thought process that will actually help the city without hurting existing businesses. You know, three years ago or so when we started this show, I talked about building a like a softball complex and a soccer complex to bring youth teams in because we have a lot of traveling softball teams. And I once went down to North Carolina in the middle of nowhere and saw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of people from out of town that were there with traveling softball teams from all over the country uh, to, uh, for, their ki for their children to play. And I said, why don't we do something like that? Because it brings people in, you have to stay here for a week while they do the tournament, right? Ah, nobody, nobody cares about that. But you know something? North Attleboro is spending $53 million right now building a complex. They figured it out in North Attleboro. That doesn't hurt any businesses here. It helps businesses because people come in, they have to eat, they have to stay here. And then we, we had somebody that actually brought containerized shipping idea to Fall River. Now, there's a business that doesn't hurt any existing businesses, mm -hmm. but it brings jobs and money. But no, what we want to do is bring in things that sound good. Amazon, you know, uh, you know, slave labor and all kinds of problems. Market Basket, and I'm not, I'm not, I've heard Market Basket's a very good, very good uh, supermarket. But the fact is, I said, let's look at the numbers. When you close, if, if Stop and Shop closes, Kmart closes, you, you, dis, you know, you, you, you end up losing more than you're gaining. This city never get, goes forward, and I don't care what Rob Mellion says, because he can walk back across the Taunton River to where he lives. He's full of crap. He's been around a Chamber of Commerce for a long time now. Uh, Fall River businesses are not doing well. We don't have a lot of small businesses, and he's not even doing his own job. So when you go see the governor, tell him what a great job you're doing down here, and tell him to give me a call. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I really have to say one thing, which is what, Kat, what uh, Linda has always said, okay? It's about loyalty. It's about loyalty. Well, let me tell you something, Linda. I'm looking at your loyalty right in the face. I'm looking you in the face. I'm looking the viewers in the face. Kmart was here for 40 plus years through the good times and the worst times, and they kept their doors open no matter what. And guess what? Kenny Fiola doesn't know what he's going to do with them. You know what, Kenny? That's a shame. Where's your loyalty? Oh, that's right. Your loyalty has always been to your wife's political aspirations. And you make sure that you get the donations for your wife in all your dealings. And we can see that. Because remember, we can look at the OCPF reports. And we can look at the deals you've cut for the city of Fall River. It's going to be interesting when we start doing a story and start overlaying all of them. Okay? So remember that. And the TIF board, that's another joke. That is another joke. Again, person on the TIF board is the president of Jobs for Fall River, a.k.a. Fall River Office of Economic Development. The vice president is on that TIF board. There's two right there out of, what, five votes you need? You know, yeah. and this is the problem. This is the problem. Why don't you put a citizen on the TIF board? Why don't you put a citizen on a few of these other things? non-politically connected because you know what you don't want the truth to come out i've sat in on your meetings i've watched them they're a joke they yep. are a joke You're the right. decision is made before you walk through the door stay really angry and let's remember kmart and make these people do something for a business that stuck with us through thick and thin and remember we're here for you bring us the news story bring us the tips we'll make sure they get out there we're not playing games, not as you do. Stay angry and have a great weekend. Stay really angry. <laughs>